thank you for the introduction. So today I'm going to uh, present you an analytical model for T and uh, U-shaped cantilevers used for sensing and energy harvesting applications. As you know, uh, resonators with supporting end masses, such as functionalized paddle or prop tips or seismic masses, are often used as NEMS or NEMS devices in uh, application areas as diverse as chemical or biosensing, atomic force microscopy, or energy harvesting. And in order to maximize the performance of such uh, sensors or energy harvesters, uh, the geometry of uh, such a structure should not be limited to the classical parallelepiped shape. And therefore, to design such st structures, different approaches can be employed, such as FEA simulation or analytical modeling. However, those uh, approaches are not uh, optimal. In fact, the major drawback of the FEA simulation is the uh, difficulty in extracting the influence of each design parameter without performing time-consuming simulation while for analytical modeling, it will often give us solution, often very complicated, so as to hide underlying relationships. So this serves as our motivation to derive a simple analytical formula for N-mass effects. And this is the aim of uh, our work, as I said, is to develop a simple analytical formula for replacing an arbitrary shape with finite mass uh, with an effective point mass at the beam tip, which incorporates the effect of translational mass, which are standards, and the effect of rotational inertia, as well as eccentricity of the hand mass. Now, the utility of this work doesn't lie only in this uh, generality, but also it allows someone to convert non-dynamic solution for a point mass into solution applicable to a more realistic uh, hand masses. Here is the problem statement of this work. Uh, so as I, we have like a, a beam with a purple rigid mass of arbitrary shape. And what we want to do is to replace this uh, arbitrary shape with an effective point mass at the end, accounting for both the translational mass, the rotational inertia, and the eccentricity. Here we assume that the beam is elastic. It's also prismatic and monolithic with the hand mass. We also assume that the end mass is uh, rigid, and we only consider the eccentricity on the horizontal axis. So here is the method that we use for the derivation of the effective point mass. We actually write the vib free vibration boundary condition at the end of the beam for the original finite end mass case and its effective point mass counterpart. And then we equate these two worlds two works at the hand loads, and we obtain this equation uh, with the effective mass. Note that here we restrict our attention to the first bending mode, uh, whose shape is assumed to be dominated by the an inish, an inish, an inish, inertial sorry, force at the, at the end of the beam. And this equation can be expressed to be general in the sense that no specific geometry has been assumed for this equation. This figure is actually representing the solution result of this equation and enables us to define each influence of each parameter, namely the uh, eccentricity and the rotational inertia uh, of the hand mass, and also to calculate the error that will be associated with the cruder approximation of just replacing an eccentric mass with an, uh, a point mass at the end of the beam. So if we look at the influence of each uh, effect, now in most practical case, uh, the ratio J over ML square will not exceed 0 0.2, so we'll rarely be over this green line here. And therefore, the uh, N mass will be much more sensitive to the, to the eccentricity effect rather than the uh, rotational inertia, unless the, the mass is concentric with the beam tip. And for instance, if we take the example depicted on the right hand side for this uh, geometry of uh, T shaped devices, we it give us a J over ML square ratio of 0 0.2, so we are lying on this green curve, and uh, E over L ratio of 0 0.5. So what we see is that the N mass is actually 3.5 times the actual mass, and 87% of this factor is due to eccentricity, and only 13% is due to the rotational inertia. Now, in most of the cases, 
the device will be fabricated with rectilinear geometry, such as the T or U-shaped cantilever. And in these cases, the previous equation can reduce to the following one, with L0 and H0 being the length and the thickness of the head. And therefore, this equation could be used in, instead of M in existing dynamic solution for a cantilever with a concentrated tip mass accounting for both eccentricity and rotational inertia. So to validate the, the result of our model, we uh, compare and we, we compare with the phase simulation. Actually, we estimated the fundamental frequency of a T-shaped polymer-based energy harvester made of a polymer beam that you see in blue and a stiff and dense head with another material that you see in purple. You have the dimension and the mechanical property listed here. And we found a benchmark value of 350 0.7 Hz with FEA simulation. Now, if we compare it to the actual hand point mass, we obtain a very poor, approxi very poor approximation, actually 591.8 Hz, which is 69% uh, high. And uh, this is mainly due to the large uh, size head of, uh, of, of, the, of the, the large size of the head and also. Uh, significant eccentricity. However, now if we replace M by the effective mass, we obtain a very good approximate of the fundamental frequency of this resonator, 356, which is only 1%, 1.5% high. And we also uh, run this kind of comparison on different geometry of cantilevers. And we found that the error of the model, including this uh, hand mass effect, are significantly reduced. What we did as well to further confirm our uh, analytical model was to compare it with two experimental uh, data. The first experiment consisted on a uh, silicon cantilever that has been uh, electromagnetic actuated and has a piezoresistive readout system. Uh, there was a different uh, nonlinear geometry for these cantilevers, two T's and two U's, as shown by the schematic here with different dimensions. And here in this table, we uh, show so the measurements of the fundamental frequency of these four resonators, along with the modeling results, with or without the uh, mass and mass effect. And this comparison shows us that the error of the model, including the end mass effect, are reduced significantly compared to the original model. We can see that for small size devices such as U1 and T1, the, uh, actually the, the result of the model lies within the range of measurement frequency, while, although a bit stiff, while for larger heads, we offer good in most of the time, we are still quite high uh, discrepancy in the value due to large larger size of the head. And the second experiment consisted of extracting the uh, viscoelastic property of organic materials to do so, we uh, fabricated a U-shaped organic cantilever of a B-layer material made of um, piezoresistive epoxy resin charged with carbon nanotube that has been spin-coated on uh, different flexible substrates. Then we parted uh, this b material with a vinyl cutter plotter and uh, we obtained this U-shaped resonator as you see on these FEM images. You have the dimension of the three structures that are here. Uh, this b material uh, mechanical behavior can be expressed as an effective complex modeler. And what we did here, we measured the resonant frequency of these uh, three uh, different cantilevers, and we converted this uh, resonant frequency into storage modelers from the previous ana analytical expression. And we compared this, for well, in doing so, actually, we replaced the actual mass by the effective mass and the storage modelers, the young modelers by the storage modelers. And we compare this result that we obtain with our MEMS and analytical model with dynamic mechanical analysis, and we find like a really good agreement uh, for the storage modelers, and a good agreement as well for uh, the loss dissipation in friction delta. Here we assume that the Q factor was slowly due to viscoelastic loss. So to conclude, uh, I presented a new analytical uh, formula that's been derived in order to uh, treat one canti a cantilever with supporting hand mass with an arbitrary shape and a finite mass as a point, effective point mass. We 
take into account the effect of eccentricity and rotational inertia. Uh, we show that the eccentricity has uh, mainly influenced the, the resonant frequency of such cantilevers, and that uh, our results ag agree pretty well with uh, FEA simulation. In addition, we compare our model with different experimental uh, data, uh, which are quite encouraging for both silicon and organic MEMS, and we still see a bit of difference in the resonant frequency in our model due to the large footprint of larger heads. Finally, I would like to thank our fundings and special thanks to Professor Heinrich from Market University for his, his help on his work. And thank you for your inter inter internship.